Hi traders, welcome to the live webinar. My name is Chris and this is an Admiral Markets webinar taking a look at candlestick and Fibonacci patterns uh, in this strategy series of about nine, I think. So looking forward to that. We're going to dive into uh, the live topic, uh, the live charts, I should say, in, uh, in just a second. First of all, though, be aware that this webinar is shown to a global audience but may not be suitable for everyone. Please visit AdminWorkersGlobal.com, select your country for residence, and contact the appropriate entity for more details. Also, please be aware that trading for exchange and global financial markets is considered high risk. Please seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. This webinar is for informational and educational purposes only. By continuing to watch this webinar, you agree with this disclaimer, and you are aware of, this, aware of the risk involved in trading. All right, stumbling there over some words. Let's get started. First of all, uh, today's Wednesday, which means that tomorrow there's going to be uh, a big event, of course, in the UK general election. You could find out more info by going to ivmarkets.com, clicking on this link, and you'll find out a lot of info, stats, graphs, uh, articles, more webinars. One of those webinars, by the way, is on Friday, 3 p.m. That's an extra webinar. We're going to take a look at the results, try to digest it, try to see what kind of impact it's going to have politically and for negotiations with the EU and also, of course, the impact on the financial market. So that's coming up Friday. Nenet and I will look together. In the meantime, you just maybe looked at Nenet's uh, recap, not recap, uh, live trading session that was earlier today. Tomorrow we have an educational webinar as well. So you got all this info right here. You can use admiralmarkets.com as your hub with analytics. As you can see, fundamental, technical, wave, calendars. Check that out every time you you know start trading to see if there are any events coming up, articles, education with webinars and other articles and courses here at the bottom, Zero to Hero and Forex 101, and uh, of course platforms and the opportunity to start trading as well, obviously. So that's all here. All right, with that said, I'm going to head over to the charts. Of course, we've seen some interesting moves uh, in the last uh, 24 hours. Uh, yesterday, we were looking at the markets. And uh, I was you know, sharing, explaining what I'm looking for uh, in the next days, hours, and days. So we can take a look at that and uh, see what has changed in the meantime. We'll start with the euro dollar. First of all, hang on. All right, there we go. So I was talking yesterday about the euro dollar that I would like to see a break of 113 with a strong day, daily candle close above it. That would be, for me, one way of, of trading a breakout to the upside. So obviously that did not happen. And the reason was because, of course, 113 is a strong resistance. We saw, let me zoom out again, you can see the, the top on the left. And that was a, that is and was yesterday as well a strong resistance level uh, that is not easy to break. So you can see the consequence. Price just stalled and went sideways. The other thing I was looking for is a bounce at the pivot point as a continuation with the trend, the weekly, or if price fails five, six days and goes sideways, or if price breaks below the pivot. So from this perspective, uh, we're seeing some reaction here. Let's dive into intraday trading to take a look what's going on. All right, so on the hourly chart, you can see that uh, the bounce happened indeed. Now, this is a bit of a toss-up because really price did push through uh, the pivot point. I did, I think, remember, you know, remember mentioning saying 112, between 112 and 125, and it did not break below 112. Uh, there's a bottom here on the left, two bottoms here. So from my perspective, it's more of a zone with, between this bottom and the pivot point. Uh, that was the kind of bouncing spot of interest for myself. And uh, price, from that perspective, did not break it. But I must say that this is a very, very strong candle. So it is against the trend. And you can see that if you attach too much importance to that, you might get into trouble because obviously price turned around swiftly. So, but this candle like that, uh, is something is a quite a strong candle. So if anyone skipped the bounce to the upside because of that, I can totally imagine. And I can see 
why and it makes a lot of sense because it is a strong candle it's it is only an hourly chart but still pretty hefty drop there so on a four hour chart we we see a wick but uh, I would say not a very substantial response so looking at it from this perspective it's not an easy bounce trade to take we did discuss it yesterday so maybe some of you were on guard for that and um, you know, managed to, to get enter here or, or here somewhere and price did move 60, 70 pips to the upside, 60, 50 pips, sorry, to the upside from that point. That is a maybe a logical target to aim for uh, because of the fact, of course, that it's been multiple resistance spots and, you know, so far price has not been able to break above 113. So in this case, aiming for just below 113 does make a lot of sense. So... Anyone see this live? Did anyone think about this uh, potential bounce? Just out of curiosity. Doesn't matter if you took it or not. I'm just curious if you were looking at this uh, and thinking about this scenario. Anyone here? Maybe you were not trading at the time. It happened a few hours ago. So I'm not sure you know, how much you were following, uh, if you had time to follow the market earlier today. Anyone, did anyone watch this live as it was unfolding, this drop and then bounce? Seems not. No one was looking. Okay, no problem. So I think personally that this one was a bit more comfortable. This one I think is too small, in my view, as a candlestick, compared to the sizable candle next to it. But I think a candle like this, the second one, is is okay. Anyone who didn't exit here at 112.80, looking at this wick, would be good to exit here. So if you take the candle closes themselves, the difference between the candle closes is about 33 pips. Stop loss has to go below it, so we're looking at about a 30 pip stop loss. So it's about a one-to-one -one trade, and if anyone exited here, it's, it's a bit better. But I'm just, why am I talking about this maybe a bit longer is because we talked about it, or I talked about it, uh, yesterday in detail, you know, the breakout on the daily chart, the bounce, the break below it, or sideways. So this is, this bounce has happened. Now, uh, basically, I would not trade it in this zone anymore. So I would either wait for the breakout, I would wait for price to go sideways in another two, three days, or I would wait for the bearish break. I would not take another bounce trade, because if price uh, approaches the support uh, it could bounce but it's a 50 50 I think it's less likely to bounce because it has already used support before so from my perspective kind of that interest in in another bounce in that area although it could happen is not uh, yeah it's not the same it's uh, I would not uh, be looking for that Cool. Mary says that uh, that she was looking into it, but uh, missed it uh, because she was looking at other pairs. Cool. Which pairs were you looking at? We can take a look at those. Dollar yen. I was looking for a bounce at the 78.6 fib. Right. Breakout here. Sorry. Uh, retracement here for downside to the 78.6 fib on Monday. Bounce here. Do we have any candlestick patterns that would give kind of light to that? give um, you know some hope of a bounce and obviously it's easy to say in, or see in retrospect that it wasn't a good bounce right uh, if we analyze it then the only two candles I think that might have shown you know some potential there for anyone is these two but I also have to say that those are very small candles. And if you look at the high and low, 23 pips, 15 pips, those are pretty small candles for a four hour chart. And ultimately, I personally did not, would not consider those good reaction candles to the 78.6 fib. Yes, there were two dojis, but doji is just indecision. And basically just a small bullish candles so it could it turned out 
that it was just a retracement, right? And I think that there was no significant formation here that showed, uh, uh, you know, some strength to the upside, unfortunately. No. This candle might be different. However, price has broken through the 78.65. And although my cat, which you might hear in the background, does not agree with me, <laughs> uh, I have some doubts to take this because of the fact that price has broken below the 78.65. And I would rather wait for the 88.65 to, you know, to, to, for price to bounce up to 88.65. And, um, or price to break above resistance. So from my hourly perspective, it's looking like this. And my wave analysis today had this formation and I was looking for a break of the red or the blue line. It broke the blue line, made a small lower low, hooking back at the moment. But I think that for me to be interested in any upside, I would definitely need to see a candle a close above, above this level with a four-hour chart probably. Otherwise, I would like to see price at the 88.6 fib and a candlestick pattern there. So it's either a bounce at 88 or a breakout and in both cases, I was looking for candles or candlestick patterns uh, to pierce or bounce at these levels. So this is a good example, though, um, or could have been a good example, I should say, with combining candlesticks and Fibonacci patterns. So you, you know, this is waiting for candlestick patterns at a fib level, <clears throat> which is a support or resistance level. So it's a good uh, example of the topic of today's strategy discussion <clears throat> and um, here you can see a good daily candle that proved to be a bounce right at the 61.8 fib but it looks like there's an abc zigzag going on and price decided to go deeper to the 78.6 fib but there was another thing i said besides the four hour chart did anyone join last uh, does, that, does anyone remember what i was saying about the daily chart yesterday on the doll again by any chance I know that um, it's a specific detail I'm just curious or let me rephrase it so that anyone who, who, who's watching now could uh, join when looking at this chart what do you think is the single this is a daily chart okay what aspect do you think gives us a, a warning that a buy at the 78.65 is not interesting actually when looking at this daily chart? Any guesses? Does anyone know? I mean, don't feel shy, just a, a fun, fun little question here in between. So don't feel, um, don't feel offended if, if you don't, have, let's say, the answer that I have in mind. Anyone want to make a guess here? Looking at this, this particular price action, let me close the mini terminal. All right, close the mini terminal so you can see it better. So 78.6 Fib, swing high upside, price bounce at the 61.8, is at the 78.6 fib but why is the chance that it bounces at the 78.6 fib right here not so high when looking at this daily candle the daily chart Anyone? Anyone want to take a guess? Raj says because of the resistance at 61.8. Uh, that's interesting, but it's not uh, indeed what I have in mind because uh, I'll tell you why. Because these, these fibs are primarily support so I do get your I do get your kind of um, intention to say yes broken support 
you know, after becoming resistance. Personally, I don't use it with fibs that often. Um, so that's not the primary reason. Uh, if there would be a strong bullish candle here, let's say with the wick, like that, uh, I would uh, I would be okay with taking a long, for instance, right? So because then there's a reaction at this fib. Gap was filled, indeed, here. Um, that's actually is a is a supportive reason actually for taking a long. So that is not a reason not to go long. Actually, it is actually a good reason to go long. So what I had in mind was the fact that the close was near the low. So we had a decent sized bearish candle like this, and often it's it's a it's a battle between supportive resistance and let's say price action momentum. And how do we know? which one is going to win. And that's often reliant on um, candles as they approach the support of resistance level. So if we see candles that are weakening and candles that are showing some intent to turn, there's a higher chance that the bounce will occur indeed. Whereas if the candles are showing strength, uh, it, you know, there's a good chance that price will break through the support of resistance. So in this case, we see a candle with strength because the candle is, is a decent size, not very big, but it's 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 okay, it's average, right? fine size, and the close is near the low. Why? Because if you look at the composition of it, the high low is about 128 pips, 130 pips, sorry, and the low close is 17. So it is about 13% wick, which is good. So the bears kept control throughout yesterday, the entire day, which to me makes it then therefore less likely that a bounce will occur. Of course, it always can occur, but therefore I would not be interested in shorts. That's what I was saying yesterday about you know the, the data candle, how it would look like at the end of yesterday. So now we see the result. Therefore, I would not be looking for bounces anymore on the upside until price makes it to a lower uh, support level, like this 88.65. And I also said that I might even look for shorts down to the 88.65, but I would need to see some pattern. So, you know, from this perspective, a short here could have made sense, but price has not gone anywhere. Uh, if price continues or makes one more upside like this, for instance, and makes some bear flag like that, the next break could still be interesting um, for that last move. All right, Mary, Mary was taking a look at the Aussie. So uh, Aussie, yesterday we were looking at it, this resistance, if I remember correctly. And uh, price making a little bit of retracement, then continuing further. And uh, yeah, I didn't like the Aussie yesterday, actually. Yeah, I remember. It was halfway to triangle. I was not a big fan of it, indeed. Um, Yeah, it's uh, it's something that I guess just my personal view. It did break through this this kind of resistance trend line, I guess. If you depending on how you draw it, but you get the point, I guess. Um, yes, that's true, and it is breaking to higher highs. So, but I don't see anything that much interesting at this moment. There was a, a good bear flag here on a 50-minute chart, and uh, a nice breakout to the upside, indeed. But I don't see anything interesting at this moment for myself on the Aussie. Uh, the pound, uh, kind of hesitant, did break to the upside. But I would be cautious with this break because I think that with the election pretty soon, plus this trend line, I think that could be a reaction point. Price might bounce here. So I would not be that much interested in, in the pound at this moment. 
gold is at the important bouncer break spot. And considering this bullish candle, I think there's a good chance of a break. Um, let's see the next two days if it can manage to break. Couple next this week, let's say. Uh, we were talking about the odd New Zealand yesterday too, and how this is probably going to retrace higher, and that this is probably going to be a pullback. So that happened indeed. We were looking at it. Uh, 18 here and we're counting six seven pips so here we have engulfing twins on the audit chart that could have been the entry potential there uh, right here for instance on the hourly chart the four hour chart uh, these are this is a small can I would not consider that one to be something of an interest but This is pretty small. Probably the third candle would be the only one. Uh, when you have two small candles like that, it's it's not so good. But if you have you know a few candles not breaking this low and you see some good momentum here, then that candle could have been a good moment to uh, to take the uh, the trade. Of course, there is a pivot point just ahead of it, so that's something that uh, might still consider to wait. For instance and put a pending order maybe just above it. Now this one had the, I'm not sure if there was any news event because it could have been news event driven. So, you know, that's not easy maybe to take a pending order there. But anyhow, we did discuss the potential bounce. And sometimes it's not easy to, sometimes they're not great candles to, to take. So it can happen sometimes that the analysis shows a bounce. The bounce happens, but there is not really something of a, a signal that warranted a, an entry and uh, that can happen sometimes so that depends on one's outlook if you use pivot points you might have been scared of that right from my perspective I was more focused on this ABC correction at the time thought that that was a pretty decent likelihood um, so that was an example uh, what else? Well, of course, uh, basically, using candlestick patterns that support a resistance is always good if there's momentum visible. So here, although it's a reversal, there was good four-hour momentum on four-hour candles showing good strength. And then we could put a fib from here to here, and we see confluence between the 38.50 and the, the pivot point. And if we see two wicks like that, bouncing at uh, those resistance levels, yeah, that was um, a potential there um, for such a short trade on uh, on the euro odd. Now, I think that yesterday we didn't discuss this, but I'm just looking for some examples that we can discuss um, because I think that now we've discussed everything that that we looked at yesterday, I think. So, most important step is finding the the confluence zone, the decision zone, and then waiting for a reaction there. Not the other way around, because we, we might see reactions on multiple spots. And then we're kind of becoming a, um, how do you say it, uh, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're looking at too much at the same time. Rather, it would be better to focus on the areas of interest, the decision zones, and then look for a reaction there. And how can you find those decision zones? Uh, what I do is just look at the market structure, look at patterns, uh, of course, look at high time frames for support or resistance, look at the trend, and uh, try to find confluence. And those are often uh, decision zones. And those are often where price will, will be forced to kind of show its, uh, its intent. And then it's the, the next step is to follow that direction. So instead of trading what I hope, let's say, I'm trying to trade what I, what I actually see unfold, of course, 
I have a certain plan in mind, but then I, you know, I, the next step is to to wait for price to confirm my plan, uh, rather than let's say hope that my plan will will indeed occur. So uh, yeah, regarding that's basic decision zones, and then. Um, using fibs and, and support and resistance and uh, then of course using candlesticks for that confirmation to, to to show indeed look this is this is a reaction so the decision zone is there the reaction is there and that's it so for instance maybe one more example here support level right bottom of the sideways move and bullish twins bullish twins or the last one is bullish twins this is a bullish uh, candle as well so and showing the potential for a, a bounce at support so that could be that's another example all right so finding those supportive resistance levels all depends on yeah it really depends on you I mean what I use uh, is often fractals, tops and bottoms, Murray math, um, fibs to find those those sweet zones. That might take a bit of practice, and we can maybe practice that on one of these charts. Which chart? Which chart uh, do you prefer? First one, first one mentioned is where I'll look at. So we need one currency pair. Let's take a look at that. Mention, waiting for you to mention one currency pair. And we'll take a look at that one. Anyone. I will dissect that pair and find the decision zones and key support of resistance. All right, pound dollar. Let me just renew this. All right. So Good thing, I mean, it depends on what time frames you like to trade, but daily chart is perfectly fine if you're trading more short-term, uh, intraday, intraweek. Um, daily chart is good resistance chart. And uh, what we're looking for is basically identifying what kind of levels uh, to keep an eye on, either because we want to trade at that, that level or because we want to be careful not to trade into it. So as a filter or as a potential kind of area of interest, right? And decision zones don't have to be necessarily done on the daily chart, by the way. Um, decision zones can happen on all time frames. Um, typically what I do is look at the three, three time frames. Daily chart for support and resistance. For our chart for trends and patterns. And then the hourly chart for signals, triggers, uh, confirmations of entry and um, so those decision zones often most often um, really is a, is a mix of, of these three um, but there's not I think necessarily any particular favorite uh, it depends on what the kind of analysis mixture is uh, for instance, here with the pound, let's take a look at this example. We can see a fractal, of course, at the top. Uh, we see support level here. And we see a bounce from that level. And uh, 
Let's see if we can add Marie Math for the fun of it. Already. Approaching six eighth, already bounced at the seventh eighth level. So you see price stopping at seven eighth and then again at fifth eighth, five eighth, sorry. And uh, we can put a fib on. You don't have to do all of this, but just for fun, we can take a look. And price stopped at 38.2 fib. And minus 272 target right there. So for the moment, this is, I would say, our kind of, we can, these are weekly pivot points as well, by the way. So it's kind of our guideline for, for the next step. So we can take a look at the four hour chart. We could try to identify trend and uh, patterns. All right. And we already know that there's kind of a channel going on like this. There we go. And uh, we could add another line like this, indicating a breakout to the upside, in fact. There we go. And otherwise, we can move on to the hourly, I think. Let me just move the, uh, let's see. This Murray math is changing, by the way. So these levels are specifically Murray math levels for each time frame. All right. So let's make some conclusions. Uh, I think that, well, obviously, there's that news event. There's the elections tomorrow, of course. So that's something that, obviously, uh, we have to take into account. But let's, for the moment, just pretend it's, it's, it's not occurring tomorrow. and for the fun of it, just to, if there were no news event tomorrow, what would, what, I, what, would, what would I be looking for, right? And I think that from this perspective, a key level is the bottom trend line and the 6 eight level. There's also a weekly pivot point. This kind of zone right in here, because if it breaks through that, uh, there should be a good space down to the bottom and then perhaps even a break below it because this is the third attempt of this bottom. We see that this is the first bounce, this is the second bounce, this is the first attempt to break it, this will be the second attempt to break it. So from that perspective, uh, I think there's a zone here and a zone below it if it breaks. That's to the downside. Um, the upside is a bit vulnerable to a turn because if you look at the daily chart, we see that this is a strong resistance. <clears throat> this is the first time it's approaching it. So there's a good chance of a bounce, I think. Not a guarantee, but a bounce. So this whole zone is a, obviously a, a decision zone as well. It could be a bounce or break. I think that the bounce is more likely, though. And um, we'll have to see how this daily candle reacts to, to, that, to that level, or even a four-hour candle reacts to, to that level. All right. Now, in the lower time frame, there could be even a potential breakout in this zone right here. It's a small space, so not probably that appealing. Plus, we have a 130 round level uh, in between. So that 130 level would not be there. It might be more interesting, but it's there, so it's not so interesting. If it were not there, this could be, you know, if there's a good hourly candle, small Retracement that could be a continuation up to that resistance spot. The alternative is a move down to the bottom of this channel and a bounce within that channel. 
And that's something I would probably be looking for on an hourly chart as well. So the channel itself, the bounce and break, something that can be monitored, I think, on the same time frame perhaps. But uh, a breakout of the the break of the channel, I would probably rather look on a four hour chart and a bounce of this resistance, I would also probably rather look for a four hour chart. Now, the reason why uh, is probably because of the fact that the hourly chart is an uptrend. So, you know, there's merit to say, okay, I'm going to trade with the hourly to the upside. Whereas uh, at the four hour, one could argue, is also an uptrend channel. So the four hour bearish trade here is counter trend. So that's why I would like to have more candlestick confirmation uh, on a higher time frame than, than a with the trend one hour, four hour kind of uh, environment. Hence, I think a time frame lower might make sense. Now, I'm not interested at all in this pound at this moment, but I'm just dissecting it as if I would be interested, right? All in all, I don't like it at this moment, personally. But uh, those, I think, are, let's say, the, the interesting decision zones on the pound, I would say. There's not a lot of confluence here, but yeah, that's what I would think at this moment. So maybe, uh, and a decision zone does not necessarily have to have a ton of confluence either. Uh, there's good reason for me in some cases to expect a bounce only based off on and of the FIB. The FIB itself is the main reason. Uh, because I use FIBs so much, I trust FIBs, um, I, I'm used to using them, so I don't necessarily need confluence in some cases when I'm using FIBs. So, you know, it's not like uh, there must be five things before a major decision zone has, has been found. That's not, I mean, that, that could happen. Uh, sometimes there could be a couple of things supporting each other, but it's not a must, especially if you are used to certain methods that work well for you. In my case, FIBS, uh, I could totally see, you know, the reason for price to if price could bounce at a level just based on that FIB. I mean, with the the dollar yen, for instance, uh, the seventy eight point six FIB was something that, in in its own right, was sufficient. The S2 is there, that's great, but that's just, in a way, coincidence, of course, obviously coincidence, but uh, it's not even needed from my perspective. So, so that's just to, to get you an idea about understanding support and resistance. Sometimes it's, I guess it's also, uh, in a way, intuition a bit uh, when looking at it. Sure, sure, there are some rules I've tried to explained in the past, um, but the most important thing I think to understand whether support or resistance decision zone holds or breaks is the reaction it sees versus price action. So this is the most uh, uh, interesting or important, let's say, formula, uh, it's not a formula, but or, a relationship or uh, equation uh, for such a decision, I think. All right, folks. Well, that was, uh, I guess, about it at the moment because I don't see anything else that I pops in mind. So, but if you have any questions, let me know. In the meantime, we're going to have more webinars soon. Tomorrow, in fact, uh, let me take a look. I think it's trend trading. Yes trend trading. So I think that you're going to enjoy that one. And Friday, UK general election. Um, and then uh, next week, we're back with uh, a lot of topics, live sessions on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, twice. 
And of course, Thursday, we take a look again at a topic, which is, uh, oh yeah, we're taking a look at timing and time patterns. That's uh, one week from now, one week and one day. Uh, if you're interested in any of these indicators, oh yeah, one thing, by the way, um, Keltner, for instance, was also one of the support resistance levels I use. And more Keltner indicator, part of the Mediterranean for Supreme Edition. Also, uh, the pivot point uh, from the Med uh, Mediterranean for Supreme Edition. So, uh, in my opinion, the Dalian has not a signal to go up as yet, because the daily candle close was near the low, unfortunately. Which, when looking at this daily candle, means that I think that there's a good chance of a break to the downside. So because of that, because of this daily candle yesterday, I'm not looking for upside. But if today's candle is showing a bullish pattern, then I would think about it tomorrow. For today, I'm not interested in longs purely based off of yesterday's bearish candle. Because the candle is a decent size and the candle closes near the low, I think that there's a good chance the price could break through the 78.6 and head towards the 88.6. Um, let's see. What was the fib like? What was the fib like indicator you're using with the descriptions? I do you mean? I'm not sure which one you mean. You mean this one? This one? That I just draw drew on the chart. No problem, Andy, by the way. Happy to, to have you here. It had a breakout. I'm thinking. Ah, I think I know which one you mean. Hang on. This one, right? With the, yes, this is called Murray Math. It is indeed based on Fib uh, ratios divided over octaves, basically music octaves. So. Uh, the inventor here, uh, the creator, taking fibs and and transforming it into into uh, a musical division, <laughs> quite interesting. Uh, music to our ears, <laughs> and uh, very interesting levels indeed. And it only it's automatically plotted, gets only replotted when price breaks through the extreme, plus two out of eight or minus two out of eight. So no work to be done. It all goes automatic. So if you're interested in that, just send me an email. I'll write down the email right now. Uh, sorry to hear that, uh, Mary. Th this is, by the way, the email. If you're looking at the recording later on, just please feel free to pause it right now so you can write that down. And, yeah, sorry for that. That's annoying, Mary. It, it is 42. Not sure where you took it. These, uh, fortunately, were, for my opinion, not strong enough. But it could be a bit tricky, that. I can definitely imagine. Um, yeah, and this this bearish candle myself is uh, too strong for me at the moment. But who knows? Let's see tomorrow. Maybe it'll look different. Yeah, those things can happen. We maybe see something on a on a different time frame, and no worries. You know, every time um, we learn from that experience, so that's part of the. 
part of the process. How is the best way to place FIBS? That is a bit complicated question. It's a good question, uh, but uh, it is a bit lengthy, it requires a bit lengthy answer to, to make it really, you know, uh, proper response. I would probably refer you to you uh, to see the AdRockets YouTube channel. You can do that right here. And you just have to go to YouTube and click on Admiral Markets and then search for Fibonacci. And you will find more webinars. You, you add it on the left leg, already finished one or on the new leg. I'm not sure which time frame you're looking at. Dollar yen? Dollar yen, I would still plus a place this fib on the chart from this top, this bottom to this top. That's still my favorite at the moment. I would take it off probably if price breaks below the 88.6 fib. Then it, it doesn't have much value. Probably not will be used. Will probably not be used either. So. All right, great questions there. Uh, wish you great trading. Be careful tomorrow, and uh, hope to see you all uh, soon. All right? No, nope, most welcome, Lubomir. Lubomir. Good to see you and everyone else, and talk to you soon. Cheers.